Hey guys, thanks for joining me again today. Uh, we're in chapter 6 of John. Let me pray for us real quick and then we'll get started. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to read your word. And I just pray that this would not be just a time of um, academic understanding, but that we would experience you today, Father. And I pray that as we read these words, you would help us to apply this to our life and that we would be different for having encountered you this morning. In your name, Lord Jesus, amen. All right, chapter 6. After this, Jesus crossed the Sea of Galilee, or Tiberias. A huge crowd was following him because they saw the signs that he had performed by healing the sick. Jesus went up a mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, a Jewish festival, was near. So when Jesus looked up and noticed a huge crowd coming toward him, he asked Philip, Where will we buy bread so that these people can eat? He asked this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii worth of bread wouldn't be enough for each of them to have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There's a boy who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they for so many? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, so they sat down. The men numbered about five thousand. Then Jesus took the loaves, and after giving thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also with the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were full, he told his disciples, collect the leftovers so that nothing is wasted. So they collected them and filled twelve baskets with the pieces from the bar five barley loaves that were left over by those who had eaten. When the people saw the sign he had done, they said, this truly is the prophet who is to come into the world. Therefore, when Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea. He got into a boat and started across the sea to Capernaum. The darkness had already set in, but Jesus had not yet come to them. A high wind arose and the sea began to churn. After they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea. He was coming near the boat and they were afraid. But he said to them, It is I. Don't be afraid. When they were willing to take him on board, and at once the boat was at shore where they were headed. The next day, the crowd that had stayed on the other side of the sea saw there had been only one boat. They also saw that Jesus had not boarded the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone off alone. Some boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread, after the Lord had given thanks. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? But Jesus answered, Truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw the signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Don't work for the food that perishes, but for the food that lasts for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set his seal of approval on him. What can we do to perform the works of God, they asked. Jesus replied, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he has sent. What sign then are you going to do so we may see and believe you, they asked. What are you going to perform? Our ancestors ate the man in the wilderness, just as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, Moses didn't give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said, Sir, give us this bread always. I am the bread of life, Jesus told them. No one who comes to me will ever be hungry, and no one who believes in me will ever be thirsty again. But as I told you, you've seen me, and yet you do not believe. Everyone the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose none of those he has given me, but should raise them up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him will have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. Therefore the Jews started complaining about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Isn't this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Stop complaining among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught by God. 
Everyone who has listened to and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Truly I tell you, anyone who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the man in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that anyone who may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. The bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. At that, the Jews argued amongst themselves, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life in yourselves. The one who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. Because my flesh is true f food and my blood is true drink. The one who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so that the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. It is not like the manna your ancestors ate, and they died. The one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. Therefore, when many of his disciples heard this, they said, This teaching is hard. Who can accept it? Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples were complaining about this, asked them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to observe the Son of Man ascending to where he, he was before? The Spirit is the one who gives life. The flesh doesn't help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and are life. But there are some among you who don't believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning those who did not believe, and the one who would betray him. He said, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted to him by the Father. From that moment, many of his disciples turned back and no longer accompanied him. So Jesus said to the twelve, You don't want to go back too, do you? Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom will we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Jesus replied to them, Didn't I choose you, the twelve? Yet one of you is a devil. He was referring to Judas, Simon Iscariot's son, one of the twelve, because he was going to betray him. And so this is a lot of text. There's a lot of, it was very meaty, right? But something I want you to look at is in the very beginning, it tells you that this is all happening at Passover. And so that, I'm going to explain what Passover is, and that's going to really explain the bulk of what all of this really means. Um, the fact that this is all happening at Passover. Passover was the celebration of what God had done for Israel in bringing them out of Egypt. So you see, all of Israel was enslaved in Egypt, and God sent Moses, and, and through Moses, he spoke to Pharaoh, who was in charge of Egypt, obviously, right? And he, uh, he had asked that Pharaoh would let God's people go, right? And Pharaoh refused. So then God gave plagues that were, um, after each plague, you know, okay, so here's frogs, we're going to turn the river, the, the Nile River into blood, giving proof, that uh, evidence that, that Moses is God was the one true God. And then gave Pharaoh opportunity after each plague to relent and obey and then let the people go. And he didn't. The final plague was the plague of death. And so with this plague, what was going to happen is because Pharaoh would not, would not obey, would not let them go, this final plague was going to be a plague of death. That the firstborn from every home, from every household, would die in one night. Um, but for God's people, for Israel, God provided for them a way that they would not have to suffer death. So through his grace, he provided a way that if they acted in faith, they would be saved and covered in the blood, right? And they would receive salvation. Um, and so what they had to do was they had to find a spotless Passover lamb. And they had to bring it into their home and have it live with them for a certain amount of time. And then that night before, they were to kill the lamb. It was sacrificed for the family. And then they painted the blood above the door, which provided that death could pass over. And then they enjoyed this meal together where they ate the lamb. And so they sat together and they enjoyed this meal together. And so this also symbolizes the fact that they're enjoying table fellowship with God under the protection of God. And that's how they had salvation. And they were to celebrate this every year afterwards to remember how God had saved them. To remember um, how by grace through faith covered in blood they were saved. So what Jesus was saying here was, that was pointing to me. I am the Passover lamb. So you have to, it's not just about this, this memory of what happened back then. I'm going to do this finally, once and, all, once and for all. Right? You're not just going to be saved 
from a country and remember how your people were saved there, but I'm going to save you from your sin. I'm the Passover lamb. Salvation is through me. And that's the main point of this text today. Salvation is through Jesus. We don't have to eat his flesh and drink his blood, really, right? But he was symbolized as the Passover lamb that came into death for us. All right, thanks for spending this time reading with me today. Um, I would love to have you subscribe and follow along with us. I'd love if you have any questions or comments, you know, put them down below in the comments section. Um, and if you have a question, I'll do my best to go back and look into that and get back to you. It's hard to get into all everything that's in each chapter because they're kind of long. Maybe we'll start breaking it up smaller later. Um, but thanks. Have a great day.